Our first guest, one of the uh, loveliest and most charming uh, women we know. She stars in a uh, brand new HBO series entitled Sex and the City. It premieres Saturday night. Here now, say hello to Sarah Jessica Parker. Welcome to the show. The beautiful, the charming Sarah Jessica Parker. I don't think, I don't think I've seen you since uh, you were married, but you know who was here a couple of, uh, three weeks ago for Godzilla, your husband? Matthew Broderick, what a lovely couple. I'm so happy for you guys. Congratulations, that's very oh, nice. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. How's that going? How's that married life working out there? Um, it's so far so good. Is there I fighting? highly recommend is, is, it. Is there tension? Is there bickering? Oh, I've been married once. I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that's all about. <laughs> well, then you remember the first year. Yeah, first year was, well, see, mine started out oddly. Mine started out oddly. And then it got great. Oh. Yeah. Okay. For a well. while, and then it wasn't so great. <laughs> But I, I, they just pass this along, and maybe you can back me up on this. If you want, you know, get married in an odd way, because then, when it all goes to hell later, at least you'll have that to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good and sound advice. I wish I'd known that a year ago. Yeah. How you doing? Very well. You look great. You look really great. Oh, no, come on, and get I a hold of yourself. I think I married the wrong man. Oh, stop it. Well, no. <laughs> Truly, you just came back from vacation. I, I haven't seen you in person in a really, really long time. I haven't really seen you in a long time. time. You were and busy you doing swell. your Broadway shows. Oh, thanks very much. I, uh, you know, just. Uh, I I'm just, not trying to. I know. Whatever. <laughs> I just cut out fried foods. It makes a big difference. Have you noticed it in your skin? Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, virtually glowing. Ah. <laughs> virtually. <laughs> hey, how about them Yankees? How about them Yankees? You're a big Yankee man. fan, aren't and you? And they won last night. Yeah, I'm a big Yankees fan. Do you ever go up there? You and Matthew go Constantly. to a game? Constantly. Yeah. Every opportunity It's a beautiful have. ballpark, isn't it? It's a beautiful bar park. They just can't, they can't move that ballpark. It's, an ex it's such a thrilling experience yeah. to walk into that stadium. Well, you know it's done. It's a done deal. Why fat, do you say that? Fat boy has already got it figured out. <laughs> and, and it makes me sick because, like you, when you walk into that uh, edifice, something mystical happens to you. I'm sorry, when you walk into the what? Beautiful edifice. I'm just kidding. Ah, that's uh, a pretty good one, too. Uh, Whoa, hello. <laughs> um. I, I, um, when you say uh, the fat one already has made the decision, which fat one would you be referring to? Steinbrenner, oh. Mr. Big Shot, Mr. Bonehead. Mr. Bonehead has occasionally given us free seats. Well, I'm sure well, that's great, and he's occasionally he's been nice to me in the past, too. I dig the front office. Yeah, but he's... Uh, huh, you what? What did you say? What did you say? I dig. Oh, you dig the front office. The front office. Oh, man, alive. <laughs> but it is... It, it is a, I would hate to see it move. It's, it's gone. Get used to it. I think that um, now would be a good time to start a letter-writing campaign. Too late. But it kills me to think about it. They're going to go, he's got a thing planned in Newark where it's going to be, like, not, not just a domed stadium, you know. It's going to be like a theme park, and they're going to have bowling and everything there. <laughs> it, it'll it's be the Newark Yankees. I know it's unconscionable. He ought to be thrown in jail again. You know, he was in jail once already, this guy. He's already done time. I say, put the goat back in prison. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Do you, like we do you, should talk about this probably later, and I mean not, I mean more seriously. Another, I mean it's, it's heated and it's un, it's it's a very unpleasant right. topic. It's no. painful and it's horrible. No, people think we're kidding around here. No, but, no, 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 no. But just it's think about serious. think about New York. Think about the Bronx without Yankee Stadium. Think about that. That ain't right. Think about the train system, the ma mass transit here as we know it. You know, the big part of being a, you know, a metro card holder in the city is taking that train up to Yankee Stadium, That's right. man. Yeah, well, you can just kiss Going that to goodbye. Bronx, now, kiss that goodbye. Some people being you and Matthew will be renting a Volvo station wagon, driving to no, Newark. No, we will not. We will not. Stay, staying in the big Yankee Town Hotel. <laughs> you know what? We'll be watching it at home on television. No, you won't. You'll be boycotting it. You, you will give up on the Yankees when they give up on New York. I will do exactly what you tell me to do. Really? I am a... No, no, I'm a, I'm a sheep, not a shepherd. Do you understand anything? You know the game, probably, are you a student of the game? Do you know what you're I love the game, and, and, and no, I don't understand yeah. any of it. No, I, I, I occasionally have to be told what a, what a ribby is, yeah, yeah. but um, I, I don't think it really matters. I understand the history of it. I like the little men in the, in the uniforms on the green. I mm -hmm. like the sound the ball makes when it hits the bat. There's nothing can't beat it. I freaking love the Yankees. I love the dugout. <laughs> you know, I, 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 
I'm especially excited about the team this year. Mm -hmm. They've been looking great. Oh, they're just All great. They could, they could win every game. There's a chance they'll win oh every game God, this year. Oh, my God. It'd be just magnificent. It'd be what beautiful. What about David Wells? How about that perfect oh, game? Oh, God. Wasn't it fantastic? Yeah, that was exciting. And he was on the program the night that, that um, Matthew was on the program. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, that must have been a big thrill for yeah, everybody. Yeah, it was thrilling. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, we had a lot of talk about that evening. So. Yeah. How many games do you go to? Um, so far this season, well, I was at opening day. Mm -hmm. I got a ball on opening day. Really? Like a foul ball? You caught a foul ball or something? I got a ball. Uh, okay, I came in. I had, we had great seats on the field from the front office. And, um, <laughs> and uh, uh, we were there, and, and Jose Cardinal, you know, the first base coach, was there. And it was a little bit lonely still because there wasn't a lot of people out there yet. And he just looked really lovely. Anyway, I know we're probably running out of time. But I smiled at him because he, he looked swell. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I kept Boy. smiling at him, but not because I wanted a ball. Just you're enthused. But I was just, and you know, and there he was. He's a day. first base coach for the Yankees. Right. And, um, and, and so anyway, into the fifth inning, Bernie Williams tips the ball. And it actually knocks then off his shoe and straight mm -hmm. down the first baseline. Right. And Jose Cardinal picked up the ball, did like that to me, came over and threw it underhanded because I'm a girl to me, <laughs> gave me the ball. My hands were, sh I was more nervous than on the day I got married. Oh, and what'd you do with the ball? Took the ball home. Smelled great. I was still shooting Sex in the City. Took it to work and made all the crew members mm -hmm. smell the ball and touch it and feel it and it had a great <laughs> scuff on it. You know what I mean? Like the leather, the, the freshly <clears throat> scuffed leather of Bernie Williams. Yeah. Let me let me give you a little hint. Now the next now the next time the next time this happens when, when you because you already have a ball the next time this Get happens a signature? no no find it find a little kid somewhere in the crowd and oh, give God, the no. ball to him <laughs> no, no, no. no pass it on to him because, I know. oh you mean the next time yeah the next take time the it happens take the ball back and pass it on pass it on to another Absolutely, to a little kid a, that's a very you know pass on your enthusiasm to to another generation yeah. I would love that's a lovely yeah but they're thought. gone the Yankees are gone they're they're fin they'll finish up. <laughs> Finish up this year. Uh, oh, rain that, on my parade. That place is going to be a, a whiz. That's They're out terrible. of business too, aren't they? Now let's talk about uh, other matters in your life. You're in the big uh, HBO thing uh, coming up, uh, like a mini series sort of deal, isn't it? Six it's, episodes. It's what a it? series. It's uh, twelve episodes. Twelve episodes. Um, this year, maybe we'll do a few more next. Well, year. it might be like an ongoing thing. Yes, perhaps. Oh, good. And and this is this is based on what? You you play what? Tell, well, tell this is based about. on Candace Bushnell's columns from the New York Observer, which then published in book form, and it's basically about um, it's about life in the city, told through the eyes of a single gal, mm -hmm. who uh, writes about sex and relationships. True and life it, anecdotes. True life hyper real anecdotes of. Her, her, she participates in her columns, meaning that what she experiences and writes about is not just other people's mm -hmm. relationships and their right. sexual, uh, well, uh, way they choose to live their life. Huh. Well. It's not anything like taxi cab confessions or anything See, now of that's, that sort. When, when I first heard about it, I thought that's what this like was. Your diary. Yeah, I thought that's what this was. I thought this no. is one of those uh, documentaries about, you know, life kind of subculture, the, the gritty, the edgy. Well, we want it to feel a bit like it's a documentary mm -hmm. or a reportage, or, but, but, but it's not um, just, you know, vulgar and crude. I, I mean, it's, no, it is not. rated R, but I'm PG, you're PG. draped in R. You're, you're, you're the voice. You're, you're, you, you take people through these uh, sort of tales. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and as you uh, saw them dramatized, did any of them remind you of your own life? In, <laughs> in any way, I mean, in, in, a, in a positive way. I don't mean in a, in a bad way. Um, well... We both go out to dinner. Um, there's so little that I that I relate to this character yeah, because yeah. her life has been so different. I've not really spent a lot of time being single in my life, like single, single, playing the field. And she is a real a, an eternal dater, and that's it's part of her mm -hmm. life to be that. So is it, is it a good place? Is New York City a good place for single people now, or is it not so a good place for single people? Well, I think there are varying opinions. I think that women in their 30s feel like it's a difficult city. Um, but I think that this is, you know, a romantic and exciting and difficult city, but that makes for really interesting mm -hmm. people and That's therefore right. makes for interesting men. Right. God, it's nice to see you again. It's so You know, I think the world of you and I think the world of Matthew is a nice guy and you're a terrific uh, couple. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's Hang around. We'll uh, chat at the party after the show. Really? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sarah Jessica you. Parker, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>